Several years ago at AWS, we made a commitment to serve people that really nobody else really wanted to serve. People with high medical needs and people with high behavioral needs. Serving somebody that has either um, high medical needs or high behavior needs from a provider's point of view uh, can be several times more risky, uh, more difficult. And I think that the reason we're so successful is because we look at each person as an individual and we try to determine what they need. But along with that, we also have some really sound practices that we follow. Providers have typically been hesitant to move into those fields. And our history, again, uh, I think between being a little bit more entrepreneurial, a little bit trying to think of ourselves as the agency more on the cutting edge, that's led us to um, be in the um, advanced guard of, of serving those folks. We have a lot of folks who have seizure disorders that require constant monitoring. We have folks um, with dysphagia who maybe can't uh, swallow food appropriately, so either they're fed a modified diet or fed via G-tube. Um, we have folks who require positioning. We have folks who have issues with skin integrity, skin breakdown. Um, also folks who can't ambulate without staff assistance. We've seen a decrease in hospitalizations of our, our um, consumers in medical homes, I think because of the nursing care and coverage they get. Also our staff training. Um, our staff know what they're looking for, what to watch for. Um, as far as reduction in behaviors with our um, consumers with high behavioral needs, we've seen, we saw in the first year an 87% reduction um, in incidence of behavior. And so our staff go through training so they understand how important it is to build a relationship with somebody. That way when they're angry, um, we kind of are on the same playing ground and we understand each other. Um, and also to teach respect to the individuals we serve. Um, give them opportunities to respect themselves. A little bit about Travis, he's an um, energetic uh, young man that loves to play sports, uh, just about any sport that there is, um, and loves to write poetry. Very outgoing young man. When I first came here, I, I was an angry person. I, I can go a day without hitting somebody or fighting staff or doing anything like that. He's figured out ways to um, channel his anger at times. You know, initially he would act out. Now he pretty much have we've developed strategies to help him cope with things better. Um, he'll go read a book, he'll go for a walk, he'll call and talk about things as opposed to becoming angry. I've noticed that lately I've been struggling with some of those things but I'm getting through it easier now. Myself and the staff have helped Travis um, manage um, his anger issues by communicating with them. Um, I think everything starts with communication. I mean, if you're a good communicator, you can tell by Travis's body language, you know, what type of day he's having. And we try to intervene, step in, and, you know, see what's going on before things escalate. I would love to see Travis um, earn his GED. Um, I would love to see Travis get a, um, a job outside. Um, he enjoys working for the workshop, but he, he wants to be employed um, outside of AWS. I would love to see him do that, and I would also love to see him move into a supported living type of environment where he gets his own apartment, maybe shares an apartment with someone, and he's as independent as he can be. We are dealing with people. We are not dealing with charts and graphs and uh, feeding tubes and machines and wheelchairs. We're dealing with people. Those are things that people may need. They may need those supports. They may need those systems in place. But our focus is always on the individual. Thank you.